And welcome back to WGN TV Political Report. Sticking with the Democratic primary for Illinois 7th District. She's earned the backing of the Chicago Teachers Union and more than two dozen black clergy leaders in her bid to unseat Danny Davis from Congress. Melissa Conyers Irvin has also faced some questions about dealings inside her office as Chicago Treasurer. Here's part of her conversation with our political reporter, Taman Bradley. What steps do you think the White House and Congress should take to fix the immigration system? Well, we certainly know that our president has acknowledged that some work needs to be done to fix the immigration system. And I look forward to going to Washington, D.C., working with our president, working with his administration. We know that we are a welcoming country, and we should be. We know that we're a wel welcoming state, and we should be. We are a welcoming city, and we should be. We need the necessary resources to be a welcoming city. Let's talk about the district and, and your, your main opponent. You've said uh, the district doesn't have enough federal investment for schools, transportation, clean energy, human infrastructure. Uh, there are many members of Congress who'd say the same thing about their districts. So uh, what's your plan to deliver new investments for the 7th? The 7th Congressional District is one of the most affluent districts in this country. So when you mention other Congress people probably feel the same way, this is a very unique district. It includes the entire loop of Chicago, a very affluent district, very affluent area, but it also includes the most underserved communities, not only within our city, but I will argue within our country of the south and west sides of Chicago. Well, I'm the only candidate in this race born and raised in this district. I was born in Inglewood, 7th Congressional District, raised on the west side, 7th Congressional District, currently live on the west side, 7th Congressional District, the only working mother in this race, raising a seven-year-old daughter on the west side of Chicago. This is very personal for me. So when I think about the amount of dollars that the 7th Congressional District is sending to Washington, D.C., yet we do not see those resources returned as an investment in our community. That's what I look forward to not only advocating for, but bringing those dollars back. Because one thing about me, Taman, I'm not just a talker. I believe in working, and I have a proven track record of so. In recent months, Congressman Davis has made a number of stops highlighting investments that he's brought home, including $177 million to help with energy costs. He also appeared with Governor Pritzker at the opening of a solar company. Uh, how do you as a freshman congresswoman do better? You know, you mentioned about what has been brought back as far as investments in our community. Um, Congressman Davis has been in office just about since I've been born. I've lived in the 7th Congressional District my entire life. The district, the west and south sides of Chicago, I cannot even argue say, to say they look the same. Unfortunately, they look worse. The living conditions of the, the south and west sides of Chicago need improvement. And it's time for someone with new ideas that is relevant to the challenges that working families face today. Working families in the 7th Congressional District are looking for someone that is going to work as hard as they do each and every day to help them live. The cost of living, we continue to see rise, yet salaries have remained the same. We need someone in Congress that understand the challenges of working families today. I think Davis would note that since his election, poverty has decreased and more people are working. He's received a, a, an A ranking from advocacy groups. You know, he's also the ranking member of the Worker and Family Support Subcommittee. He's a senior member of the Ways and Means Committee. Uh, by him not being in Congress, the district is losing certainly a very well-connected, experienced uh, politician. So what, what context do you have in, in, in Washington? The district has already lost. For the past 40-something years, this district has suffered and continued to decline. It is time for someone with new ideas and energy to go to Washington, D.C. and work on our behalf. It's time. And by the way, Change can't wait. We cannot wait any longer. Our children deserve better. Our working families deserve better. That's why I'm excited to be the working mother in this race that understands the challenges of working families every day. Late last year, the Board of Ethics found that you wrongfully fired two whistleblowers. Have you ever threatened to retaliate against employees who raise concerns about your, your conduct? We've issued that statement. We've had several interviews. 
In this 7th Congressional District, this race, I am focusing on what matters to working families. What matters, what I hear, is the cost of living increasing, the cost of prescription drugs increasing, the, cross, the cost of health care increasing, yet salaries remaining the same. We need good paying jobs in this district. And by the way, as I mentioned, the district includes the most affluent communities to the most underserved communities. I am that candidate that is able to unite those communities and allow us to work together. I am about unity, not division. Fair enough, but the, the ethics board may end up fining you ultimately. So, but just to the substance of the allegations made against you, did you use a staffer to plan your daughter's birthday and or go grocery shopping? Did you use an employee to be your bodyguard? I've addressed those allegations. I've issued the statements. We've had a number of interviews. I'm focusing on what's important to the residents of this district. And what's important is the increase in cost, yet salaries remaining the same. What's important is that residents don't feel safe. What's important is that Roe versus Wade was overturned and we need someone in Washington, D.C. that is going to protect abortion rights for women. Kena Collins is running hard left. Where do you land on the political spectrum? How would you describe your politics? I would describe my politics as a person that is able to understand all walks of life, which is very important for this particular district. I mentioned to you that I come from humble beginnings. Of course, I have progressive values. I come from humble beginnings. Of course, I believe that corporates should pay their fair share. And by the way, they're not paying enough. Of course, I believe that we need to unite this district and not pit for pat one group against the other. It's time that we work together for the greater good. Are we all going to agree all the time? Absolutely not. I don't agree with my husband all the time, but I still love him. It's time for us to work together and not against one another. Let's end with this. Give us your elevator pitch. We've got about 20 seconds. We're going up to the, the top of the elevator. Why should you be elected to Congress? Washington, D.C. is not working for working families. I am the only working mother in this race that understands the challenges of working families. I have the energy. I have the vision. It's time for someone with new ideas to go to Washington, D.C. to work on our behalf, to protect women, to protect children, to protect seniors, and certainly to help working families in the the way that we not only need, but we deserve. As we mentioned, there are five total candidates on the Democratic primary ballot. Whoever wins is likely to go on to Congress, though there is one Republican also running this fall. Coming up next on WGN TV Political Report, we're turning to Washington. Mitch McConnell is giving up his leadership duties later this year. Who will become the standard bearer for the Republican Party in the U.S. Senate? That and more when we come back. Stay with us.